In this video, we're going to be breaking down my gameplay and giving you guys tips to get better at this game. My name is John, I'm a top 100 player in the world and a professional EAFC coach. And we're going to be diving in to a little bit of dribble movement, a little bit of shimmy shimmies, and then some of the game of wit to improve your game. If you can't watch this video, guys, you're not going to get better at the game. So let's go ahead and get right on into it. Stop putting your account at risk and using coin sellers. Because now with FCAlert.ai, you can follow the trading advice from our ChatGPT integrated trader trained by two top traders on the FC market for free. Be one of the first 10,000 signups and gain access to the upgraded beta AI influencer tracker releasing for FC25. Get started trading with AI. Guys, Um, update to what's happening with the website. If you guys don't know, I am a co-founder of FCAlert.ai. And if you guys follow me on my trading advice, we have created the Influencer Tracker Trader. And so this is coming out. It's almost, it's pre-development. We're still in the development side, almost there. But basically, you follow, your, you follow a style of trader, a high risk, low risk, medium risk. And then it will also notify you when those a when the AI has made trades. This is coming from I am training I am training the AI, and so is another top 100 trader. And we're developing it completely from scratch. And you guys can even ask questions even now uh, on the site. So if you guys are eager to get asking questions, you can come down and actually ask. Here's a high risk trade investment. And basically, you'll think this is real time. Uh, I'm not even, uh, I'm not doing anything here. Whoop, actually, whoop, sorry. Uh, there, so here it pulls up. Still thinking, still thinking. High risk trade, 50,000 coins, and bang, it hits you with a ton of different options. So if you guys are interested in making coins and having a portfolio that tells you everything you need to do, check out fcalert.ai. I know that's a little bit longer than our normal intro, but guys, I'm so super stoked because that. Dude, you have guys have no idea how long it's Stop taken your to get. Oops, risk, sorry, you, it has taken so long to get to this point. I, I can't. I can't explain to you how long. Um. Anyways, it's my thoughts. Every like the whole thing is my idea. So hopefully you guys like it. But let's go ahead and get right on to this video. So, um, when when I talk about the most important stat on actually like in playing this game, the most important thing you guys could ever do. Is actually just learning how to left stick dribble. That's that's like ninety percent of it. And why do I say that? Well, because you can get into a tight space like this, right in between these center backs, these positions here, and manage that location. Let's watch the play here, and then I'll go through it. Look at the dribble move. Oh my goodness! Now he blocks it. It bounces around, bounces around. But we'll keep going through this. Instead of going through like a full match, I decided to go through some clips on today's video. But here's the win again in a high position. There's the skill, ball roof cut, bang, bang, and just a bang, bang play. So very smooth, very effective, um, very, I, I guess that's a high level position. But basically, guys, the main thing what we're looking to do, get the ball into the zone and then get it into here and make a player miss. That's that's the general concept. That's really it. So we get the ball into the spot. We get into a position where now, I technically, I want to be squared up as well. You want to be squared up. If you're not squared up, you, my friend, will lose. I promise you, you need to be squared up. Once you get squared up, this is the most important spot right here when you're squared up. Because now all I'm trying to do is get a little movement and right there. So I ended up shooting too early. It looks like he was actually leaning away. I had an opportunity and he still gets the block with that block plus. So he gets it. Now, the ball bounces. This is a break point. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a break point. This is why I teach. This is why I call. This, I, it's on my actual boot camp that's coming out soon. Guys, we got a lot of stuff we're working on. But basically, a boot camp coming out, if you guys haven't watched, we have a, uh, a full boot camp where I break down every single thing you need to know in the game of wit and everything. But this is a break point. A break point is a change of possession. In a break point, there's two options. You can either be a passive or you can be aggressive. What I mean by that is you can either press this position or you can lay back and, and retreat. Right now, it's not so easy to get away from this. Now, what's the easy and obvious read? This to here, right? So him passing it to here. That's the obvious read. So if he makes a bad pass and doesn't see that, we win that. So am I going to pressure here or am I going to retreat? Depending on the skill level of the opponent, I'll choose one or the other. But he plays it tight. He plays it tight. Then he gets out. And then now we're going to rotate. And that's the idea. So we stay stay high, stay high, and then we get a we get a tackle into pressure. 
So that's coming for off of a break point. So he was I just so good at defense here, or did he pass the ball into a pressured scenario? He passes into a pressured scenario. I win the position with Kane, believe it or not, and then we take a position. Um, this skill move to do this, this is uh, the McGeady spin. To really hit the McGeady spin proper, you need him to be like going at this angle. And there's like a cross point like right here where there could be a critical point. That's the perfect time to hit it. So it's like right when it's coming this way. And then you, basically what happens is the RNG variables move the ball. Your hitbox is perfect. So it's a perfect hitbox location, essentially. If you guys don't know what hitbox is, I'm sorry. But there are hitboxes in this game. And uh, no one talks about it. But here we are. We're in a position four on one. And so now it's kind of a dangerous spot. So here's the thing. Um, this is where it's a little bit weird, a little bit tricky, because the value that most people see is making this pass this way and trying to go this way. That makes sense, right? Now, in a game of wit, I like to think, what does my, part, what does my opponent think? Because it's not what I do, it's what my opponent does. Am I technically one-on-one -on -one here? Sure. So if I get to this location, that's, that's a much better position than getting over here, right? And so if if it looks like if if it looks obvious that I'm going to take all this space, why as well just make a fake to that spot, get him to jump just a little bit to create that space and then open the lane. So it was more this is more of a game of wit scenario just to create space and open that position. So that's that's a quick little tip for you guys on that one. Let's go ahead and see this next clip. So guys, I haven't looked at this since uh, the weekend. There's a step over cut. And to have space, there's a fake shot. Oh, duh. Ooh, man. Sometimes I love watching these clips back. But uh, clean, clean clips. So how do we get to this position? So we're waiting for that player to approach. What I'm looking for is this play right here. That play comes forward. Ball on the back of my shoulder there. Turn into space. The second I get to that spot, we ball or we hit those step overs into space. From there, I'm trying to I'm trying to move the keeper. So depending, so since this is early in the match, it is a chance match. It's early in the match. I don't know my opponent's skill rating. So I don't know if he's going to move the keeper or not. So I'm looking for that near post. He doesn't near post, right? So in this scenario, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a read. Technically, should I just shot across the box? Sure, maybe. And maybe hit a rebound. Maybe, maybe that works out, right? But in this scenario, I'm actually just trying to go near post. I really just want to hit a near post. I don't want to worry about a rebound. And so we stop. We stop on the on the spot with a I think it's an L1 tap. I think we actually tap L1 here to do this. Yep. So we actually tap L1. We activate L1 and cut. So it's that tight tight dribble movement that we tap and then we hit that position. So it's I, I mean that that one's pretty. If we actually look here. So yeah, we're actually tapping that L1 there, and that's what ends up pulling that space down. So that's uh that's a little bit. A little tricky there, but uh, actually, you know what? We'll do this. We'll I'll, I'll put my controller like that. Maybe we'll do that for the future, right? Um, uh, but again, that stuff happens really, really quick. Let's see another one. Uh, I think this is a high level player too. Okay, so this is the shimmy movement. Okay, so this is if you guys get if you guys are terrible at uh getting pressed. So this is actually one of the higher players I played, and I oh man, this one's this one's a game of wit. I'm just looking back at this right now. And um, this is a really, really, really hard play to navigate. Um, this is a really, really tough play to navigate. So um, one of the main things, like I say, guys, is left stick dribbling is the most important thing you possibly could do. And if you guys think that it's lag and it's delay that's holding you back from dribbling in a circle, there's a 99% chance that's not the case, unless you're playing literally at the, the worst time possible. That is not the case. What I want you to do is I want you to come down to the training ground, okay? So I want you to get into the training ground, and what I want you to do... Oh, whoop, looks like my uh, my uh, camera's out, so apologies on that. But basically, I, what I want you to do is I want you to dribble in a circle, in a tight, tight circle, and I want you to just try to do it with managing the location of the ball. So what I mean by that is, you see how I'm keeping this ball, the ball on this side of the, on my body? I want to just manage that position in a circle. You do that, guys, you'll get way better at this game. I promise you. So, like, that will allow you to hold and shield this position and then wait an opportunity. So, like, 
I barely, I like this. This guy was really good at tackling. Very, very good tackler. And so when this happens, what you're looking at is like the ball's on this side, right? And so he's on that side, but he's going to maybe go that side or he may go this way. We don't know. And so what we need to do is actually press the ball to about this spot. You see how I take that? Guys, this is all methodical. So I take the ball into that spot. He knocks me off, and I'm actually about to cut up. But then it knocks me off, so I move. I get off set on my positioning. So my, my, switch, my movement's a little bit off because I got knocked. And so now I'm still in a good spot. And so I'm still trying to just manage that location. As you see, I'm just trying to shield that position. He doesn't want to break here. He doesn't want to break here. The highest level players, this is what I call crosshair defense, guys. Crosshair defense is when they stay super relative to that location, and they just manage that spot. The second he steps, that gives me the space, and I have the right, uh, the right pass with, uh, with uh, Kane there. But now what I'm seeing is I see a space right here out, so I'm going to try to attack that location. I'm, uh, do I have the angle? Maybe. Maybe. Do I hit that? Maybe. This is one now I'd have to hit perfect, and the moment, yeah, I, I could have hit that. So I missed this right here. I missed that wide open. But what I ended up doing is I ended up shifting this defense down, and that opened up this lane this way. So we managed this. Now this rotated at me, and so that felt weird. And so I dodge the bottom. I come up, and then I have to dodge again, and I have to move around again. And so it's like I'm trying to. I keep on trying to go into the interior, and he keeps on cutting it off. And then his wing play, his wing play came comes out of that position there up to the top. So now, now his wings out. And so there he goes. One, two. And so now I have the space. So he breaks that position here, which then ultimately opens up. It opens up the space right here. That's where it opens right, right in that zone. So, um, the, the whole thing is he moved that center back and that's ultimately what, uh, what happened, uh, for him. So, okay. We got two more clips here for you guys today. Let's check this out. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, long ball. Oh, this is the same guy. This is the same guy from the chance match. Long ball all the way down the pitch. Uh, we're in that L defense from yesterday or a couple days ago. You guys know. There's the defense. Okay. Um, I know that a lot of you guys have been really, really uh, eager for me to post something on. Uh... Oh, yes. Perfect. in the creative run with it to shield the game. And then the game of wit to finish this out. Okay. So I know you guys have been wanting me to post about. Uh, step overs uh being able to defend step overs and step overs are probably the hardest thing to defend at a certain skill and so the the there's there's a lot you need to know to really master the ability to defend step overs now to do step overs it's pretty obvious you see a hole in the defense you take a step over right so it's 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 relatively straightforward right so if like uh for instance if i uh ah, does this pull up I'm going to see if I can get it real quick. If I can get it, no? Okay, I was going to show you guys step over. But basically, when we go and do a step overs, guys, you can cancel step overs. You can manage location and space. So what I'm looking for are some very specific things in defense. It's in my defense that the opponent sees, okay? So when you do step overs into obvious space as an attacker, it's obvious. Now, as a defender, it's not, you know, you're trying to manage structure, right? They're trying to attack you in very specific spots, right down the middle or right on the edge or right in this position. It's a crosshair. Now, you need to be able to manage that crosshair. And how, how do I do that, right? Okay, so the ball comes into this position. Now, I don't really like this zone. This is an L defense. So this is a broken structure. This is, this is a bent structure, I like to say. A bent with no center mid. That's usually not what I like. And so I'm using this this L structure to manage the ball on the, on the near side. That's the idea. I don't want the ball to be able to rotate this way. I don't want that, so we're going to manage that. And so, guys, this is important to step up to this step over uh, defense. So now we're making a defense. So this is, a, this is also a bent structure. So I like to say there's three defenses that I'm going to show you, uh, or there's four, technically four defenses I'm going to show you. Um, and I'll, I'll break them down here. Okay, let me let me let me draw this out. So we have four different style of defenses. One is strong, one is weak, right? One or one is one stronger versus weaker. Uh, you, I'll let you guys decide which one's stronger or weaker. But or there may be five. Let me, let me just trace. There's a lot of them. Uh, but you know, there's a tons of draw. So this is probably uh, I'm telling you which one's strongest, right? So this is the most common one right here. This is where are we doing the 
if we're going to be defending it this way, it's going to look like that, which I call the L defense. And then we have the base flat. So there's no nobody back. So these are kind of the four different styles of defense. So I'll just number them one, two, three, four. So that you're going to most likely be presented with. All right. So when we're presenting this structure, and this is just a 4-2. Now, if you guys play a 4-3, it's going to be similar to this. Uh, most Sometimes these both the, they send you'll send both these players forward, so you actually have this. And then sometimes you'll have like it on one side and then a, a hole in the other. That's for a different story. Uh, if you guys play the 4-3-2-1, it's very similar. Just bear with me on this it, because the structure breaks down the same. But basically... What's going to happen is this is the weakest structure. This is the strongest structure. This is kind of like it ready to break. And so you're just trying to manage and get that to flat, right? So this is usually when they have momentum. This is usually when they're cutting back. And then this is when they're flat. And then this is when they're usually like trying to break you. Okay. So that's, that's usually the case. This is usually the case. So what I'm looking for guys is a, basically I'm looking for uh we have a defender here defender here defender here defender here and perfect structure and there's only one way to really attack a perfect structure and that's kind of like through here through these angles right here the edge and then the cut cut and cross so it's like a cut and cross so these are really the ways to attack you can't really go down the middle it's really tough unless you pull things out and then it doesn't it's not actually going down the middle but basically, that's how you attack a, um, a structure like that. Now, when you're attacking this, now you can attack here and here. And this is now you can actually kind of get into that interior space a little bit more, okay? Because of that center, that CDM's out. Now, when you're a defense like this, it's a little bit harder to defend right here. You can't really attack that. So you're forced to here and you're forced to rotate all the way to the other side of the pitch. You see that? That's why I use that L defense. It's a little bit stronger on the near side, okay? That's if that makes sense. And then over here it's it's just you can just attack anything anytime. You can just go one on one anyway. So, uh depending on how your defense looks, guys, uh basically you guys off of reading this, uh, guys, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Nobody talks about this. This will all be in my boot camp uh labeled uh th types of defense. So, we'll be breaking this down um, in the future. So this will be a whole video. I'll have a whole video basically breaking this down. I'll have different clips on it and everything. But okay. So when we get into that structure, then this is this is all important to understand how to defend step overs. Okay. This is very important. We get into that structure. What does it look like? Well, we just broke that L and now we're in this four on one. Now, the difference between this one and this is that my center mid is central here versus near post, right? Or near side. So what that does is it makes people want to go this way. But once I go that way, players then can attack this way. So it's a balance. So you have to find your structure and balance. So right now I'm looking at Modric. And I'm trying to manage this. It's not so perfect because things can move. And it's not what I do. It's what my opponent does that changes everything, right? So as we stay in this position, we're in a pretty good spot to actually defend. So I'm looking and I'm ready to defend this position here because that's actually pretty dangerous. But I'm also I'm also being I'm also prepping to see this right through here. And that's where it can be challenged. So that's where step over this is where like step over snakes love to attack right through here. They love that right there. So the second I see this road that movement this way, that gave me a key indicator that I need to do one of three things. I need to pinch this way. I need to pinch down or pinch over those three things. And so that's how I pinch down with Bellingham in perfect structure. You see how I, I attack that position in perfect structure, make the tackle that sets up the counter attack, then creates this uh, turn with that press proven that I tell you is the most broken play style right now, the through ball with the creative run. And then it's a, a nice little fake to the far post and go near post. So the far post and near post finish. So it's right here. It looks like I'm going to go far and just moves him just a little bit. That's all you need. And there you go. All right, we got one more for you guys. Let's hop into this. One last uh, clip for you guys. And guys, I'm telling you, I'm so excited for uh, this. Uh, I, I know I'm, I'm this influencer tracker with the AI trading, guys. We're going to be like every, guys, I'm telling you, it's going to be like, it's like six bucks and it's going to have be free with ads. We're going to have, it's super, super awesome. You'll be able to track your trade, have a post to your phone, an alert, and tell you when 
when to make your trade and manage your club. So even if you don't even trade and you just manage like a 25 mil coin account or you coin seller or whatever you are, guys, you guys can make a lot of coin. You guys can make and save a lot of coin. All right, let's see this. Uh, okay. Um, is this a this is straight through? Yeah, it is. Uh, should we end with this one? I'll give you guys a bonus one. I'll give you guys a bonus one. All right. I'll give you guys a bonus one because this one's pretty quick. So it's right through the middle. So I love to go straight through the middle. And then I like to get them on one position. And what I do is I do a setup touch. And so my movement's kind of like this through the middle. Once I get through the middle, I'm kind of going like this. And the whole point, right, is that I'm not... So what happens is people will read this as a pattern down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And all I'm looking for them to read is the pattern. And then the second I look like I'm going to go back down, I shift up. And then that's where I get them beat. If I go down, up, down, up, down, up, he doesn't move. And so I just, that one, he actually was waiting for this uh, pass to occur. So he's expecting that pass to occur. <laughs> And then I get him. I get him on a player switch. But usually that's the case. All right, let's uh, let's see one more. Let's see one more. All right, this is uh, 60th minute. I'm down a goal in this match, so let's see what happens. Ooh, dangerous pass. There's the wing. Open. There's the run. Do we hit it? Nope. We hold it. And there's the play. Yep. Okay, so this is, this is a pretty standard attack uh, that you'll see me do. Um, this one's pretty methodical. There's that. There's that left stick turn. Oh, beautiful. Oh, man. Oh man, a down a goal down to do this is 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 tough. All right, let's step through it, guys. All right. So, first things first, guys, um when I start out in the backfield like this, the the main thing I'm looking to do is actually what I call soaking pressure. So, you pull these players up and they attack you. And then you're just going to get pressured here. So, they pressure pressure pressure. Um and that can effectively actually pull these mid mids up. That's what I'm really wanting. I don't really care about this because there's no break here. So tactically, there's no change in the pace of the play here. This is what I care about. I care right here, and I care that this guy connects. So now it looks like I'm going to make that obvious pass. I'm just trying to build time to where I can hit that winger while this guy's making a dangerous run and see how he reads it. So he reads it. He defends it. So then we turn into that space. This is the chess move. What happens, guys, is there's a different there's a different play here. A lot of the times, people will press this. If they press this, guys, you are post, baby. You are goodbye. See you later, baby. You are division four. I'll tell you that. If you press that right there, okay? Now, if you're really good at it, you press it, and you, you can step on it. So you're either div four or you're a pro. So, so <laughs> the in-between is just... A little there so there's a passive way to play and there's a, uh, a risky way but to be risky or aggressive you have to be really good at the game and why i recommend in this scenario where he's at i recommend you being passive and that's what he does so he plays passive so if he commits i can go and i can hit that pass i can hit that pass all day long uh he's uh, he's toasted but in this scenario he turns that allows me to turn we take this position inward now, we're, all I'm looking to do, guys, is I'm trying to manage what I call the attacking highway. This is the attacking highway right down the middle, right down the middle, and to what I call the queen's position. The queen's position, why do I call it the queen's position? Uh, one, the attacking highway, I can pass from any side of the pitch, and then in the queen's position, I can still do that. I can also pass directly through these lanes and attack both, all, every angle possible. So it's probably the most important spot to be in, especially when you have space. So is it easy to manage into a position? Not at all. So most of the time, what you're looking for is you're looking for one of these guys to commit. So you're going to have to do a little bit of a duck, dodge, dip, dive, and dodge, baby. A little dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. So right when you get to here, you turn down. I see this. I see this play opening. But what I'm going to do is most likely fake that because he'll most likely jump down. And then I rotate it out. So I get him on an early switch. And then he's stepping for the edge. I do a backwards creative run. We get into this nice spot. So we're back into it. So he he won the last like three seconds. So if you think about it right here, he wins that position. So right here, I need to manage this a little bit longer to break his defense earlier. So I could have dribbled into this position. But I think he was really good at tackling. And so I actually wanted to create space from that. Um, I really 
really should have made that, but he did read that. So he did read that. I think I ended up making the right decision. But we're in a bet. We're in the same spot. No difference. Uh, but now I have the momentum, momentum slowed. He's coming at me. And so I'm just going to try to make him miss one player. There's one, two. When I see two defenders in the same spot, that means I have two center backs in the same spot. That means I have lanes opening this way. And that's what I see. I make the wrong pass. If I make the wrong pass. This is supposed to go to Sokka. This is supposed to go to this is supposed to go to Sokka, turn in, and then wrote and shoot. Um, this is what you call an adjustment. When adjustments occur, then you have to adjust to it. So I actually I'll make the adjustment pass, uh, dribble to make that through pass, which is perfectly timed. But guys, uh, adjustments is a huge part of it. You're never going to win if you can't adjust. I promise you that. I promise you that. But until next time, guys, that's my name. Uh, that's gameplay analysis. Uh, go check out FC Alert AI. Sign up now to get early access. You'll get three months free of the premium access code if you guys sign up now with my link. So don't forget to sign up now. It's free. You'll get three months free to sign up. I'm telling you. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is, this is the Gameplay Analysis.